Hey, what's going on guys? I want to talk a little bit about hobbies and some of my thoughts and just some general information as well as later in the video show you these catalogs and give you some perspective on uh, more expensive things within hobbies. But, you know, I've had a conversation recently with uh, someone that sparked this uh, video idea and uh, I recently made a purchase um, and I bought a, a watch that was uh, $300. And although the watch was $300, I think it got a great deal. I mean, it's from 2003, and original price on is about $2,000. So, I'm ecstatic. But when I was telling this person <laughs> this story, they still, they went $300 for a watch? Like, holy crap, that's, I never paid for a watch that much. I don't think I'd ever buy a watch that expensive. And, it, you know, it sparked a lot of thoughts and a lot of past messages I've gotten. People who are really, really into knives, they may see a knife and the price is like $250, and they go holy crap, you know, I'll never pay $250 for a knife. And I can tell you personally, uh, firsthand, when I was younger, I thought I'll never pay more than $50 for a knife. And look where I've, you know, where it's taken me. Um, so there's a, there's just countless different hobbies out there. There's so many different things you can, I mean, hobbies in one thing, I mean, you can actually do things as a hobby. Some people bowl, that's their hobby. But I'm talking about uh, collections slash using things, you know, objects that are hobbies. Um, so you can collect knives. Uh, lighters, specifically Zippos, guns, pens, uh, gear in general, stamps, coins, you know, the list goes on and on and on. It's really endless. Um, art, you know, some people are just really into art, alcohol, tobacco, you know, there's just, it, it really is endless. I can't even begin to touch upon all the different varieties out there of stuff you can actually collect and use and enjoy. But in this video, I want to talk a little bit about the difference between, um, collectors and users. Now let's take uh, knives for instance. There's some people out there who have a huge knife collection. They might they might have like a hundred different knives but not one single knife is valued more than say a hundred dollars. And that one person can be completely happy with what they have and love it. And they can look at someone else next to them who has maybe six knives and each one of those knives are four hundred dollars a piece. And they look at them and they think you know what that person's crazy. And then invite and vice versa. The person with the six expensive knives is looking and saying, you know, what are you doing wasting your money on those cheap knives? You know, it's really about personal preference. Some people enjoy cheap knives. Some people enjoy expensive knives. And it goes within every single hobby. For example, here's a, a, a magazine with mostly pens in it. And recently, um, when I did my videos on the embassy pen, a lot of people said, you know, 40 or 50 bucks for a pen is just ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. So... Because I do the mail, and because I see countless different types of catalogs and magazines and, and such, I ran across this one the other day, and I stopped my work and I actually took my phone out and um, I jotted down a note of the name of the catalog here so I can actually get my own copy so I can do this video. And I want to show you, and this is another, an older magazine, or a catalog rather, that has some various things in it I want to talk about as well. But I want to, in this video, prove to everyone, even though I don't need to prove to you guys, but I want to make the point that some people within a certain hobby, take it to the extreme. And they want just the very best and the very highest quality, and not even most expensive, but you know, high quality usually comes with a high price, but just really the best of the best. You know, the very best possible, whatever's out there that is just the highest quality period. That's what they like and that's what they collect. So I'm gonna give you just some examples in these catalogs and it might shock you some of the prices on this, but I wanted to just make a point, specifically with pens in this one, that thirty or forty dollars for a very nice pen is really nothing. It's nothing at all. Um, you can pay up to thousands of dollars for one pen. You know, there's some Zippos out there that you know from. Well, I saw a 1935 Zippo in very very good condition go for about nine hundred dollars. You know, there's not there's custom knives that are fifteen thousand dollars. You know, there's watches that are fifty thousand dollars. You know, I mean, just it's really it's endless. And I just want to make that point and show you some examples in these catalogs here. But the first one here, in case anyone's interested in pens, um, this is a free catalog. I just went online. Uh, there's the company name. Just Google it. F-A-H-R-N-E-Y um, pens. And, of course, you can check out the website. And there's a free, you know, you can get this in the mail for free. But, anyway, let's flip, let's flip through this just a little bit here and give you some examples. Now, again, keep in mind, I had numerous people... Tell me the embassy pen specifically, and other people said about the Benchmade pen, it's a rip-off, you know. Specifically said that no pen 
<laughs> should be more than like 20 bucks. So keep that in mind. So as we flip through, I'm just going to show you a couple random pieces here. Here's a Delta pen, and there's all different kinds of models, but just to give you some prices here. $520, $260, Let's flip through here. $340, $520, $300, $440. Over here, a Lamy Studio pen, $235. Um, a Schaefer Intensity, 75, not as bad, a little bit cheaper. But as we go through, you'll see some of these prices are just like crazy. 475. Um, let's see, 230. This is a Parker Premium, and a lot of these are fountain pens. You know, some are there. Are, there are a whole bunch of different variety, but a lot of them are fountain pens. And I know there's a specific uh, interest out there in fountain pens, but Anyway, here's like a ballpoint type pen. It's not nothing special what we're usually used to, right? Here's a Mont Blanc, which, by the way, I know is one of the top makers of very, very fine pens. And just to give you an example here, the Classic is $845 for this pen. $845. Here's another one, $910. And then it goes down a little bit, $630, $630, $795, $860. So... I mean, you guys get the point here. If I can flip through and find some of the really high-end ones, I mean, like over the top. I mean, the average price in here is anywhere from like 200 to about 600 per pen. But I did see a few, if I can find them in here, that were over $1,000, which I wanted to spot. I don't want to spend too much time. I mean, I'm sure I made my point already, but I just wanted to find one good example of this. Let's see. <laughs> Probably should have marked the pages ahead of time. But coulda, woulda, shoulda, right? Oh, here's something. William Henry. Uh, I love William Henry knives. And I, I've made a video in the past. I had a William Henry uh, model that was $750. It is literally the most expensive knife that, knife that I've personally owned. And that knife didn't last long in my collection because I ended up trading it for the Smith & Wesson 586 revolver. Uh, which was later traded again. But just to give you guys an example, and by the way, how I got that knife is I wouldn't pay $750. I never really had that much to buy a knife for. Uh, I traded most of my Zippo collection. If you watch my old Zippo collection uh, video, I had about $500 worth of Zippos. And someone really, really wanted most of them. And that's what they traded, uh, traded for my Zippos is a, a William Henry knife. But we all know that, you know, well not all of us, but a lot of you guys know William Henry Knives. Some of these specific models with the Damascus and all the gems and just the, the works, you know, the, all the bells and whistles. They can easily be over $1,000. But let's take a look at some of their pens. Here's a custom, uh, looks like a Timascus, which is a colored Damascus. A lot of times they'll put uh, titanium in there and they'll anodize it. But this pen right here is $1,500. It is a beautiful, beautiful pen. I personally cannot see buying a pen for $1,500, but I completely understand as a collector in general and a hobbyist that there are people out there who can do that, you know, and, and if it's not really just if you have money too, because you may think, well, whoever has a $1,500 pen, they might be a millionaire. Well, believe me, there's people out there who don't have a lot of money, but they save. There might be someone out there who owns this pen who saved almost a year for it, you know, and $1,500 for a pen seems ridiculous to most of us, but you know what? If you make decent money, you could probably save that uh, in extra money in maybe a couple months, depending on what you make, you know? So it really just depends on what you want, what your priority is in collecting. Um, going down, the Coca Bolo knife here on the left here is $1,250. And this one up here is $1,600. It's absolutely beautiful. I mean, it's, it's an amazing knife, but... It's a collector's piece. But you know what? There's people out there who might carry this every day, and they use it. That's just their preference for a pocket knife. You know, even the money clip here is $175. <laughs> you know, if I had that money clip, I probably wouldn't have $175 in it. I'd have a $175 money clip with, like, 50 bucks in it, maybe. But anyway, that's just to give you some examples here. Some pretty wicked-looking pens. There's a Pelican Fire. Let's see what that is. That's a pretty cool-looking pen. Oh, $1,500. See? And then there's just all these crazy pen display cases, which is, I mean, if you're in, really into it, you'd have to get something like that, right, to show them all off. 
And of course I'm long winded and it's already 10 minutes so anyway I was talking about this display case but look at all those pens in there you know it might be thirty or forty thousand dollars worth of pens or more that's just crazy but anyway you guys get the point there's uh, expensive pens out there so if I show a pen like the embassy pen for forty bucks and someone goes holy crap who's gonna pay forty dollars for a pen please keep this in mind um, that's just one example let me show you this other catalog here this is Eagle National Mint and they have mostly um, collectors coins and, and things in here but they have some oddball stuff too and the reason I'm showing you this because I want to talk about watches a little bit later it's towards the end of the, uh, the catalog here now like I said earlier well I'll, I'll talk about that later let me just slip through a little bit they have a lot of collectors coins here like you know mint state 68 69 you know all that kind of stuff um, collectors coins okay I only like coins for their metal value I like silver coins and I like gold coins but for the silver and for the gold not for the collectability but if you're into coins and you don't have this uh, um, catalog here, it's it's worth getting. I think this is a free one as well. Uh, here's a 1-800 number in the bottom. You can call and see if it's available where you live. But anyway, it's called Eagle National Mint. And they have some oddball stuff in here. They have a couple knives here, but they're really cheesy. And definitely not worth the money in my opinion. They're just kind of coin type knives. But anywho... Um, let me get past the coin stuff because this is, you know, if I show you a coin that's an ounce of gold and you, you say, all right, well, gold is at $1,400 an ounce and they're selling for $1,600, you are going to go, that's a ripoff. Well, it's always going to be more than spot. And again, you're buying it for its collectability. You're not buying it for its gold content. So I'm not even going to bother with the coin stuff. People who like coins get that. I don't have to explain that to them. They flip through. They have some oddball stuff in here. Here's some fossils that they sell. Here's a Tyrannosaurus Rex footprint for $700. Uh, here's a hmm, Velociraptor skull for 80 bucks. That's actually pretty cool. If you're into that. Uh, if you guys ever watched Jurassic Park. When I was younger and that movie came out, I wanted everything Velociraptor. I thought it was the neatest thing in the world. Uh, but anyway, we got some just straight gold. And by the way, this is an older catalog, so prices will differ a little bit. I mean, for example, we have a, let's see, here's a half gram of gold for 50 bucks, which seems like a complete ripoff, but again, you're buying, they have to make money too. Anyway, let me skip to some of the other stuff I want to talk about. Here's some collector's bills and currency. We got some coin jewelry. Now we're into art, okay? Art is something that I've always had an interest in. But I really shy away from it because I tend to have expensive taste and I, I already have too many hobbies. I can't get into art. Forget about it, you know. But just to give you some examples here. Here's a... Uh, let's see. I don't really know much about art. Let me go to something who I know. Something. Oh, here we go. Salvador Dali. Here's right, right here. Looking at this one. Salvador Dali. Here's the Divine Comedy Suite. Okay, obviously a famous painting. Um, this one is not an original. It's actually a print. And it's still $1,000. Okay, down from $1,700. So, I mean, art... It's not an ori Obviously, the original is going to be probably hundreds of thousands of dollars. I don't really know, but I know it's way up there. But there's some common, very common uh, paintings. And they're basically reprints or remakes of them or whatever. But even, even so... Even though it's not original, it's still a thousand dollars to get one. Uh, there's the corrupt from the uh, Divine Comedy series. The other one I was showing you was the Arachnid, I guess. Obviously, ah, I tell you, every time I make a video, someone's gonna call me. I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. Um, even though it just seems like a second, it's actually going for about two hours. I. Uh, Got an important call, so I had to scoot out and go do something, and now I'm back, so... Oh my god, you're kidding me. Be right back. Alright, I'm back again. Uh, <laughs> the second call was a lot more pleasant than the first one, in case anyone was wondering. It was a, a pleasure call. But anyway, um, okay. So anyway, I think I was talking about the art thing. I'm pretty sure I made my point there, so I'm not going to bother with that anymore. But we'll talk about, we'll flip to, well here's some sports stuff. A lot of people out there collect sports memorabilia and all that kind of jazz. Here's um, 
let's see, Hank Aaron signed baseball for 400 bucks. Uh, Alex Rodriguez baseball, 500 bucks, and so forth and so on. Um, but anyway, here we go, watches. Now, I, I mentioned that I bought a $300 watch. It is not, um, I mean, it's a watch I like, but the reason I bought it really is an investment piece to just turn around and sell it. I will wear it for a little while and, and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, what I was, the point I was trying to make is the last person I was talking to was shocked. And they said, wow, you know, I would never pay $300 for a watch. Well, here's some watches here. And here's a, a page of Rolexes. These are all men's Rolex watches. Here's a Yachtmaster for $17,999. And here's a little cheaper one. Here's a Presidential for $10,000. And of course we have Daytona for thirteen fifty or you know thirteen five rather. And you have some cheaper Rolexes down here. We have one for twenty five hundred, an Air King. But anyway, you kind of you know, I think I got the point across. It doesn't matter what what hobbies you're into, what interests you have. There's all different levels of that interest. There's all different extremes. You know, if you like pens, like I said, a forty dollar pen to me is an expensive pen. But to some people, $40 is absolutely nothing for a pen if you're really, really into pens. So that's the whole point I was trying to make is that, you know, you have to kind of respect all the different levels of passion in, you know, an individual hobby. So if you're into knives and you see someone with a $700 knife, don't say to yourself, that person must be stupid. Say to yourself, I guess that person likes knives just a little bit more than I do. That's all. <laughs> so a lot of, I just, I constantly get comments about that kind of stuff. You know, oh, you must be stupid for buying something that expensive, or you must be rich. It's really not about being rich either. That's the other point I wanted to make, is that it just depends on how much you really, really want something. You may not have a lot of money at all, but if you want that $700 knife, and it takes you a year to save up for it, or if you sell all the other stuff you own to get it, now that you own it, doesn't mean you're rich. It just means you really, really wanted it. So, anyway, I'm pretty sure I made my point. Like I said, I'm just drawing it out at this point. And that's just how I am. I end up getting a little long-winded. But hope you guys enjoyed the video. Maybe got a little perspective on things. The, the point of this video really was just to show you some more of the uh, very high-end products and the different types of hobbies and categories and such. So you can get a better perspective on what you may be into and just kind of respect how other people go about their collections. So anyway, thanks for watching. As always, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And I will see you at my next video. Take care.